How you doing? Good. Congratulations on your first playoff win as an NFL head coach. Thank you. I know you wanted to get in eight hours last night. Did you, and are you tired or energized right now? Energized with a full 90 minutes of sleep. <laughs> Coach, give us a glimpse into the head of an NFL coach. I mean, the myriad of, <laughs> oh, come on now, just a, a snippet, a snippet, let me Do you really it. want that? <laughs> I said a glimpse. <laughs> so, um, you know, the myriad of emotions in the last 72 hours, and now up until today, just give us a little glimpse of what's going on in your head. Well, obviously, you have pregame thoughts and you worry about everything. And once you win, you're very happy. And then, as soon as you get through the press conference, you got to get started on the next week. So it, it goes kind of fast. It, it it goes from high to low to even keel to worrying about everything else. And you kind of prepare for the next week and you move on. It doesn't last long. What sticks out in your mind uh, about? Um, <laughs> the loss to Detroit and, and things maybe that you wish you guys had done better or differently? No, uh, we were where we were at that time of year. I don't wish we'd done anything differently or we wouldn't have learned from it. Um, very good team. They have a very good team, coached very well, very fast, very physical. Electric crowd's going to be up there. Wish we hadn't done anything different because we wouldn't have learned from it, um, any of our losses from that matter. And. <clears throat> we're a different team now. We're mentally tougher. Obviously, we've gotten stronger from it, and we learned some things. So we're still piecing it together, but we're, we're happy where we're at. Was there a particular lesson that came with that game? It's no lessons in losing, but losing. Um, you, you learn situational things that come with it, but that's really about it. And obviously, things didn't go the way uh, you wanted to the first time you met the Eagles, but how much did you change things up? Uh, in your approach, just the attack, the game plan, the second time around, uh, when it comes to blitzes, I think it was percentage-wise, it was roughly about the same. It was completely different from the first time we played them, um, all the way around from a game plan standpoint. Base sub, different packages. Um, <clears throat> the guys were communicating better. We could do more since they had some more experience over the course of the games, and we tweaked some things around because what we did the first time, we didn't prepare it well. You see that causing a lot of confusion on their part? I can't speak for them, but you know, it helped us defend some of the things that we gave up the first time. Tom, I'm just curious about the, the origin of that six man defensive front yesterday. Is that something that, you know, when you're building the game plan last week, you, you install it, or could it potentially be something where you kind of had it on your mind since that first matchup in week three and you got a chance to play them again, you wanted to use it? No, it didn't come up until game plan week, really. Um, we thought about it, we looked at it, compared it to the passing game, and thought we can get away with a few things there and added some things to it and tweak some things. And, you know, the guys, with the exception of the first play, they played it well. What was the contribution that KJ has made? Because um, I think this was more of a split that inside linebacker between him and Devin yesterday based on the package. Well, he was on that package, and, you know, they came out in it quite a bit more than they had in the past in 12 personnel. So KJ is probably our best downhill thumper, and it was, it was very good to have him in there for that. And like I say, KJ is a good football player. We think we have three starting linebackers in there, and he's a big part of that. He's earned his right to play. Uh, he's still a leader on our team, and he did very well. Kind of, of all the defensive scheme tweaks and personnel shifts from – week three to, to last night. Is there one particular you think was worked the best or had the, the, the most crucial role in, in having a better outcome? No, I didn't. I, um, I mean, the sixth down lineman helped. I guess it might have deterred some things. Uh, Zion moving around from nickel to safety to corner to not really knowing what he is. You know, he's, he's kind of an enigma right now. And we just got to make sure we don't confuse him. Um, I think that helps in coverage when we're trying to play a little more man because now we got our three best cover guys out there. And other than that, uh, the guys, we're, we're letting our, our elephants be elephants and our giraffes be giraffes, meaning our blitzers blitz and our cover guys cover. Coach, you've seen uh, Baker evolve mentally. Uh, evolve and excel mentally and physically. I mean, he's surpassed all of his career highs and his stats. Um, how meaningful to you and the team is it that it's on your watch? I mean, and um, if I may say, under your toolage. 
Well, I'm not an offensive coach. I know my tutelage from a game plan, from a managing standpoint, but I think the offensive coaches, Thad Lewis and Dave Canales, do a great job getting them ready, along with the O-line coaches, marrying up the run game and the pass game from that standpoint. Um, it's, it's great seeing Baker be Baker. He looks like he's having fun like he was in college. He's very relaxed, uh, very intense in learning the game plan and mastering everything. And He's going out there and playing free and playing carefree, and it's really helping him. It's really helping us. What impresses you the most of what Dave did in this game, game planning uh, for this game last week, apparently yesterday? Well, we stayed in attack mode most of the time. You know, we had a little, little bit of a lull in the third quarter, but, you know, we were in attack mode, uh, run game and pass game. You know, we hadn't had that working quite a bit uh, consecutively at the same time, so that was, that was great to see. Guys, to step up, given the fact that you know Philadelphia wanted to take out uh, Chris Godwin and, and Mike uh, for your guys, role players that, that came in and really kind of stepped up. It was huge. We uh, Palmer and Moore and Kate Otten, you know, they came up huge when they, when they defended Mike and Chris. Those guys, the catch and run plays that they made were outstanding. The stat sheet may not have shown it for Mike, and he has games like that where sometimes his role is more of just occupying the attention of the defense. So that other guys can get those opportunities. Can you just speak to um, his ability to be able to do that and how it helps you guys? Well, he's going to work no matter what. I mean, he's had a, he had his opportunities yesterday. I mean, one of them deep balls I thought we could have came down with, so we did go to him. But he's going to work no matter what. And he knows if he's drawing a double team and we're helping elsewhere, he's very happy with that as well. Tom, for whatever reason, the Bucks haven't exactly been able to solve Jared Goff for your playing this week, whether it's he's been on the Rams or the Lions. Uh, why do you think that is, that he's kind of given the, the defense a bit of a hard time going up against him? He's a good quarterback. Real simple. He's a good quarterback. He can play. Uh, great players around him. Outstanding offensive line. They got two very good running backs. They got speed at the receiver. They got shiftiness at the receiver. And they got two great tight ends. The Eagles were so well known for fourth and one, the touch push and all that, but you guys had a fourth and one um, and executed it really well with the unbalanced line and the line pitch to, to Rashad. What did you like about that call and, and why it worked so well there? Well, they've been crowding the middle, uh, something they saw on film that we thought we can get away with. We blocked it well. I mean, we blocked it well. They did a good job blocking the third and short stuff, did a good job in four minutes again, uh, just like they did the other week. And, 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 you know, we're getting better. We're getting better. Uh, Baker being Baker again, and, and he has mentioned that too, that when he came here, you knew him back when, right, when you were scouting him and all that. So can you expand on that? Like what did you, what do you mean by that? What was it that he had gotten away from that you wanted to bring to this, to this team? Well, he didn't come in here as the number one pick expecting to carry the team. Uh, with all the expectations on his shoulders, we just asked him to drive the car. The car was built. Uh, we just asked him to drive it. We didn't ask him to put in a new engine. We wanted him to be himself because his personality would expand upon the team. And then they would see him for who he is and not for who anyone else was. And then they would gravitate towards him faster. And that's exactly what he did. And in doing that, you know, he invited all the attention to him from the guys. And they really look up to that. And they really see the grit and the toughness and the the preparation that he does, and you know, he, he's ingratiated himself with the team that way, and that—that's all I mean by him being himself. Coach, you, you. Uh, looking forward towards um, Detroit. Um, the weather has been a factor in some of the playoff games, even for the most prepared teams. Uh, today, it's uh, 13 in uh, Detroit, which doesn't compare to some of the temperatures we <coughs> tend to talk to. Any special plans to acclimate the team to not only uh, endure but perform in those kind of frigid temperatures should you face them in Detroit? You do know we play indoors, right? They got a dome. I don't know. Um, no, nothing planned. We're, we're indoors and we only have to be outside for 20 seconds getting off the bus going under the thing, so we'll be okay. You know, this team had some struggles and things could have, have continued to, to go downhill. Just what, just what's it meant to be able to have, I guess, <coughs> um, a certain level of patience, um, you know, whether it be from, from the players or whether it even be the people, owners, from general manager, just to have that understanding to where you guys could finish out uh, the task at hand this year. I mean, you see teams all the time, Carolina making a coaching move in season. 
just what's it meant to be able to have that trust and that patience for you to be able to do the job that you did last night? You're going to go through adversity in the, in, in the NFL. You're not going to go through unscathed. Very few teams go through 17-0 and 0 and then win every playoff game and win the Super Bowl. You're going to have to learn some lessons. You're going to have to be get, get mentally tougher. Um, that comes with chemistry, the culture we created here, the chemistry they developed in training camp and mini camp. And as long as you go through the downs together, you'll come out of it together. And these guys have stayed the course. Uh, the owners have been great uh, encouraging us. Uh, Jason's been great encouraging us. The coaches have been great with the players. The leaders have been great with the young guys. And we stayed the course. You know, we stayed the course. We knew the things that we had mistakes on. We knew the things we had to correct. And we just kept, you know, tugging the chain, pulling forward, pulling forward, pulling forward. And, and you're seeing the results at the end. You know that when the team isn't doing well, people start calling for jobs and, oh, this coach shouldn't be doing this, um, just to be able to kind of um, get your team to perform the way they did the last few weeks and then again last night. Just how gratifying is that for you personally? For me, I know what I signed up for when I started coaching football. You know, when you win, you're great. When you don't, you're not. And it's not even about me. I'm just happy to see the smile on the guys' faces and the results from all the hard work they put in the hard work the coaches put in, seeing it pay off and seeing them reap the benefits of it right now and they just got to continue it. Uh, one of the biggest plays last night was the safety. Uh, what did you think of Major Anthony Nelson's I Dream of Peony Dance? Wow. <laughs> that what it was? <laughs> Showing your age there. Uh, Nelson has a lot more personality than you think. Uh, it was a great job by Kalaja forcing him out there that way. And Nelson, he happened to make a heck of a play there. And his I Dream of Genie Major Nelson dance was very nice. You've used a lot of rookies this year. Some have gotten substantial playing time. How much of the growth of the team from September to January is the growth of those guys? Quite a bit, at least 30%, because they're all playing. I mean, Cody Mock was a day one starter. Uh, Easy and started day one from a nickel standpoint once the season started. Uh, Kalijah, when he got back from injury, Yaya came on pretty early. Uh, Palmer's been playing very consistently. And then you forget, we got a lot of first year guys. Rashad's only in his second year. Uh, we got, there's, there's a ton of guys. Logan's only in his second year. We got a ton of guys. Zion's in his second year. We got a bunch of puppies out there playing right now. Rashad's in his second year. You would think he's three, four, five years in. So the maturity of all the guys from the lumps we took is really starting to come through now. It's more so the mental toughness and understanding the grind. And I think that's helped us out. You are, in fact, the underdog again this week. and might be for as long as you play. Um, how much of that has become part of the fiber of this team, and maybe even with your quarterback? But that really is a, not just a rallying cry, but a real thing. How does that how does that play into what they do on Sunday or Saturday? Oh, we knew that in the summer, so you know it doesn't surprise us at all. We don't even worry about it anymore. We kind of laugh when we see it. We get ready to play. We line up and we play the game on Sunday. Do they embrace that though? I mean, we've heard a lot of guys talk about it. As if it's, it's been embraced like pretty good with a lot of guys. Um, we don't expect anything. We don't expect any compliments. We don't expect anybody to give us anything. We're going to go out and earn everything that we want to get. Last one. Yes, yes, sir. Last night, um, there was a nonstop pass rush. Obviously, they doubled a lot of your um, receivers and, um, you know, Otten and Moore and, um, and Godwin finishing plays. How important is that going to be uh, with Detroit? Because I think that was uh, many ways where you scored, even yardage after catches. How important is that coming into this game with Detroit that they um, replicate that once again? It's going to be huge finishing plays up there. I mean, it's going to be loud. We know it's going to be loud. They're going to be hyped up, and they should be. They've gone to playoffs. Dan's got them playing great football right now. So finishing and not trying to let the crowd get into it too long is going to be very important for us. Good luck, sir. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Appreciate it.